Erev Tov Chavrim, I'm Stephen Benun. You're watching Israeli News Live, October the 28th, 2017. And no doubt our broadcast today is certainly going to make some wonder how could the Inquisition have anything to do with modern news. And I think that uh, after we get through with our broadcast today, it may have a little bit more impact on your opinion about uh a modern day inquisition as we have on the screen and behind us here. So here on Israeli News Live, we wanted to address this subject, especially in light of the fact that a friend of ours sent an, a, a news article to my wife about what is going on with uh, Kenneth Copeland and a group that is doing, that just finished doing a, a big meeting recently about reconciliation with Rome, trying to end a 500 year uh, uh, difference, uh, reformation, uh, you might say, between the Catholic Church and the Protestant Church there, and of course, bringing all the churches back to Mother Rome. And that's been making news quite frequently here in the headlines over the last several uh, years. But not only that, though, as I begin to dive into this story, I begin to realize that we are dealing with a modern day inquisition. And the churches that are feeling the pressure to go back to Rome, I think are more so doing this under duress. Not that necessarily that they want to do this, but it could be that they could lose their fortunes, their empires, such as the likes of Rick Warren, Kenneth Copeland, uh, and many others, Joel Osteen. All three of these men have all gone back to the Catholic Church. Even John Hagee uh, wrote a letter of an apology for the things that he has preached over the years. But sometimes I kind of wonder, you know, are these men really, is it really that they did this because they wanted to? Or is there something else behind it? Is there a financial issue behind this that has kind of forced their hand? Well, let's take a look at some issues there concerning this, and it might make more sense to you. Uh, now, this may surprise you a little bit here to learn that judges uh, here uh, in the Saddam Hussein trial there uh, were actually trained in Rome by Catholic priests. In fact, in order to be part of the ICC, International Criminal Court, which is a Roman court, you have to be trained by Roman Catholic priests inside of Rome. That may sound kind of far-fetched, but I recently... I was given some insight on this matter, and of course I did try to reach back out to this individual that had written me about this, that knew firsthand one of the judges that had actually presided over the trial of Saddam Hussein in Iraq after the war there, and he stated to me that those judges are actually trained inside of Rome, and actually by Catholic priests and asked me, was I aware of this? So I did some digging, and as I began to do some digging, I found out that there is a lot of truth in what his statement is there. And of course, Saddam Hussein was actually convicted, uh, tried, and put to death, not based on Iraqi law, but rather on international law, the ICC, the International Criminal Court. Uh, I have up there for you the website where these photos are taken from right here, Chief Judge Rahman, he was one of those judges there, but most of the judges we never hear about. Uh, in fact, he was actually killed by ISIS not too long ago, uh, a couple of years ago, I believe, when they captured him inside of the city there. But I wanted to share with you, though, because it gets very interesting when we think about uh, the churches themselves going back to the mother church. And it's not just a church issue. This is far greater than just the Catholic church and, and all the churches joining back up with the Catholic church. This has become a political issue as well and a global dominance. And of course, being very much monitored and ran and criminal courts or cases of uh, countries from all over the world are being tried by a Roman law in modern times. And so I think that some of these churches are doing this because they don't want to find themselves also under the ICC, under an international criminal court, being tried for something that maybe perhaps they may be violating in Roman law. So looking here at the Christian Jewish relations, the Inquisition from the Jewish Virtual Library there, 
paints a completely different picture about the way Rome actually was before the split, before the split of the churches there, the Protestant Reformation uh, that took place. And I think it does us good to actually go back to see what that split was regarding because what's happening today in a modern inquisition, it's not just about the church is being divided, but it is again, once again, it is a political uh, arena where the church and state unite together to punish and put to death those that it doesn't agree with. And in the case of Saddam Hussein, we see the same thing. That doesn't mean that Saddam Hussein did not do evil to his own people. There is no doubt that that is the case. But even his own countrymen, said that he should not have been put to death by their own laws, but instead was put to death by a Roman law. Let's take a look at this here. The Inquisition was a Roman Catholic tribunal for discovery and punishment of heresy, which was marked by the severity of the uh, questioning and punishment and lack of rights afforded to the accused. While many people associated in the Inquisition with Spain and Portugal, it was actually instituted by Pope Innocent III uh, from 1198 to 1216 in Rome, and later Pope Gregory IX established the Inquisition in 1233 to combat the heresy of the uh, Abligenesis and religious sect in France. By 1255, the Inquisition was in full gear throughout the Central and Western Europe, and although it was never instituted in England or Scandinavia, initially, a tribunal would open at a location and elect, uh, excuse me, uh, edict of grace would be published calling upon those who are conscious of heresy to confess after a period of grace. Now keep that in mind, after a period of grace. The tribunal officers could make uh, accusations. Those accused of heresy were sentenced at an uh, auto de fe act of faith. Clergymen would sit at the proceedings and would deliver the punishments Punishments included confinement to dungeons, physical abuse, and torture, and those who re reconciled with the church were still punished, and many had their property confiscated as well as were banished from the public life. Those who never confessed were burned at the stake and without, uh, without strangulation. Those who did confess were strangled. Now, can you imagine that? Now that, that's, and I didn't read all of it there. There's a lot more there in red you can read yourself. And it's very tiny print. It's hard for me to see even with my glasses on. And I wear 400. So uh, very, very disturbing information that happened there. But we're seeing the same thing repeat today. Roman courts, both religious and non-religious, and the fact that that interesting letter that I received stating the man having first-hand account with one of the judges that trained in Rome by Catholic clergy and presided over the trial of Saddam Hussein, who was put to death by hanging. And you just can't help but wonder about ISIS. Is ISIS, is, there, is, there, is that part of the arm of the ICC? Well, ISIS has put many uh, people to death by burning. And it almost seems to be that maybe that is a modern-day inquisition terrorizing the entire world because every, anybody that doesn't seem to agree with what's going on in the world today, those countries mysteriously seem, seem to have ISIS show up, such as in the case of the Philippines. Deuteron, the president of the country, been lashing out since President Obama was president against the United States, and now all of a sudden... He has a trouble with ISIS. I'm really, I'm, I'm really baffled by what's going on. Like, let's take a look at this now. This is the ICC. This is the way it's set up, as you can see. Rome Statute of the International Criminal Court. Text of the Roman Statute circulated as document ACON, uh, CONF.183-9 of July, uh, 17 July 1998 and corrected by the process Verbo of 10 November 1998. Just kind of giving you the dates, basically, when all this is being set up. But let's take a little bit more look at this. Rome Statute of the International Criminal Court. All right. Part 1, Establishment of the Court. The Court, and it gives you the articles that they have, the relationship of the Court with the United Nations. 
uh, the seat of the court, the legal status and powers of the court. Uh, then, of course, the different uh, crimes under Part 2 ju jurisdiction, uh, admissibility, and applicable law. And anybody knows anything about the ICC? We know that many times the Palestinians have been talking about bringing up the Israeli uh, soldiers that have fought inside of uh, the West Bank, wanting to bring them to the, uh, the ICC and be tried for crimes against humanity, etc. And in reality, the Roman court has been placed over the entire world. And this is why you see certain entities beginning to agree with what is going on through NATO, through the United Nations, through the UN body, Russia, all of them are part of this. And I'm just finding this very interesting, not just in light of the ideology of the churches returning back to Rome, their mother, and no doubt under the threat of losing everything possibly. I mean, after all, some of these ministers are prosperity preachers. I realize that, you know, I, I'm not for those things. But the thing is, is that's the church side. That's the daughters of the mother in Revelation spoken of that are coming back to their mother, no doubt, right? International Criminal Court. Listen to some, some of the interesting things here. Article 1, the court, an international criminal court is hereby established. It shall be a permanent institution and shall have the power to exercise its jurisdiction over persons for the most serious crimes of international concern as referred to in this statute and shall be uh, shall be uh, complement, complementary to national criminal jurisdiction. The jurisdiction and functioning of the court shall be governed by the uh, provisions of this statute. Now, look at the, here's one of the things I want you to look at, though. Let's go down to Article 3, the seat of the court. The seat of the court shall be established in The Hague, in the Netherlands. That's what everybody generally thinks. But look at Section 3 there. The court may sit elsewhere whenever it considers it desirable as provided in this statute. So it doesn't matter where. They can do their courting where they want to. Maybe that's what it was with Saddam Hussein. They just moved the trial over there, right? And then if you can see this, very hard to see on here. You, this is only, I could only fit, I didn't want to do a bunch of frames on here, but every place on the globe is written about cases that they're dealing with, whether it be in North and South America, Middle East and Asia, Europe, you know, and then you have on here, you know, justice report, uh, joint cases, uh, the state court, BIH custody, uh, Lubachka, uh, Chetka, I can't even pronounce the half of these names on here, uh, Netherlands world, uh, civil parties dispute prison chiefs claims, you know, it's just unreal. They're, they're, they're covering everything you can possibly imagine. And they seem to have all this power. The Roman criminal court there, it is an inquisition, is what it is. In other words, if you don't comply with Roman law, and if this is very much true, what I was written about, that they're being trained by the Catholic clergy, the Catholic priest training these judges to sit on the ICC, then no wonder why the churches are doing what they're doing. Now, here, listen, I want you to listen to what Kenneth Copeland actually says here. This was put out by Prophecy Update. Kenneth Copeland, um, Kenneth Copeland calls the Reformation a demon. Now, I don't actually have that part on here, but he does. It is true, he does do that. Listen to what is said here in this interview here. Yeah, that's been 500 years ago. Now that brother, now hey, that's a church split, brother. I mean, that's the church split of all church splits. I, really. Now, <laughs> October the 31st, 1999, representatives of the Catholic and the Lutheran churches gathered in Augsburg, Germany, and signed a joint declaration on the subject of justification. And so 500 years of arguments, misunderstandings, and sometimes wars began to give way to reconciliation and recognition of the gifts of the Holy Spirit as placed within the body of Christ. 
Now, that's not necessarily in the true body of Christ. The gifts and callings, and it's amazing to me that it's being accepted so easily. And I want to share with you, especially when he talks about the gifts being placed back in the body. Think about Romans chapter 11. And of course, this is the reconciliation of Israel, according to what Paul wrote in Romans 11. As concerning the gospel, speaking about the Jews, they are enemies for your sakes, but as touching the election, they are beloved of the Father's sakes. Romans 11, 29, for the gifts and calling of God are without repentance. In this case here, the calling is Israel or the house of Judah. They are called by God's grace. But if the gifts are also without repentance, just because they come together with all the gifts and signs and wonders they want, doesn't make it right. All right? Now, let's move on. I want to share with you something else. This is from Real News Right Now. Protestant leaders declare reunification of churches under the Holy See. The Vatican City, following more than 500 years of separation, American European Protestant leaders met with Pope Francis last week to finalize a reunification of two churches under the Holy See. The historic agreements with the results of years worth of unpublicized talks between Protestant leaders and the Vatican. This was in 2015. Prominent American pastors Joel Osteen and Rick Warren, respectively, as well as Justin Welby, the Archbishop of Canterbury, were among the Protestant delegation that met with Pope Francis last week. Pastor Warren, founder of the Saddleback Church in Lake uh, Forest, California, spoke with members of the International Press in St. Peter's Square, saying Protestants as people have a long history of heresy the time for reconciliation is now in order to ensure a full and do uh, dogmatic transition into the folds of the church. And yet if you look at it, the ICC, the Roman International Cr Criminal Court, put together by Rome, working with the United Nations, is involved in trying to putting people to death, and everything else. I don't think the Inquisition has ever ended. But the pressure of the world community as well as the churches and Jewish organizations are all under pressure to come under the guides of the Roman hierarchy. As we see here from CNN, Pope celebrates church documents that turn Jews from enemies into friends. This was the Jewish... Congress. Now, this is not the Knesset, but the World Jewish Congress, where the church really spent uh, 50 years working on what they call the Nostra Aetate, bringing a reconciliation between Jewish rabbis that and the Roman Catholic Church. Now, that's not a reconciliation between the Christians and the Jews. This is strictly the Roman Catholic Church, because Rome already has, they have known that they are bringing all the denominations back underneath their umbrella. That's what they're planning on. And so we see, as we've been seeing in the, the document of the Inquisition, the measure of your fathers. So in the case of Joan of Arc, right? And that's just one of thousands of cases in the Inquisition under many different popes that were put to death because they didn't agree with what the church said, right? Joan of Arc, just one. She's just a notable one, right? All right, so let's take, let's take a, little, a little bit more from the virtual library here. First, they arrested conversos and notable figures in Seville. In the Seville, more than 700 conversos were burned at the stake and 5,000 repented. Yeah, so if you repented, you'd be strangled instead of burnt. Tribunals were also open in Argon, Catalina, uh, Valencia, and Inquisition tribunals were set up in... Um, Ciudad Real, where 100 conversos were condemned and it was moved to Toledo in 1485. Between 1486 to 1492, 
25 auto de fes were held on Toledo, 467 people were burned at the stake and others were imprisoned. The Inquisition finally made its way to Barcelona where it was resisted at the first because of the important place of the Spanish conversos in the uh, economy and society. Okay, going on as well. The next phase of the Inquisition began in Portugal in 1536. King Manuel I had initially asked Pope Leo X to begin an inquisition in 1515, but only after Leo's death in 1521 did Pope Paul III agree to Manuel's request. Thousands of Jews came to Portugal after the 1492 expulsion. A Spanish-style inquisition was constituted and tribunals were set up in Lisbon and other cities. Among the Jews who died at the hands of the inquisition were well-known figures of, of the period such as Isaac de Castro, Tardis, and uh, uh, Antonio Serra de Castro and, and, and Antonio Jose del Silva. The Inquisition never stopped in Spain and continued until the late 18th century. And I have many family members that were caught up in that Inquisition that were Jewish as well. So this is why there was a Reformation. Not just the fact of the Inquisition. We know many of the we know the theses of Martin Luther put it on the door, but it wasn't just Martin Luther. There were many others already protesting the acts of the Catholic Church and what they were doing. And has it changed much today? Just the laws are a little bit different. Maybe hiding a little bit deeper under the cloak of religion uh, of the state. But it's a it's a religious power that is controlling the world court, the United Nations. Uh, the ICC, and of course, all the world leaders go to the Pope of Rome. Why do they go to the Pope of Rome? What does the Pope of Rome got to do with anything if, if, the, if the Rome is not controlling what's happening in this world? You know, it, it's troubling, very troubling indeed. The next phase of the Inquisition began in Portugal in 1536. King Emmanuel, oh, we already did that one there. Sorry about that. I must have bumped it several times. The, the Inquisition was not limited uh, to Europe. It also spread to Spanish Portuguese colonies in the New World, Asia. Many Jews uh, conversos fled from Portugal and Spain to the New World, seeking greater security and economic opportunities. Branches of the Portuguese Inquisitions were set up in Goa and Brazil. Spanish tribunals and uh, auto de, de face were set up in Mexico, the Philippine Islands, Guatemala, Peru, New, uh, New Granda, and the Canary Islands. By the late 18th century, most of these were dissolved. Interesting, isn't it? And it just never seems to come to an end. You know, Rome's stranglehold of the world is unbelievable. Hebrews chapter 2, if you look at it, it says here, For verily he took not on him the nature of angels, but he took on him the seed of Abraham. Wherefore, in all things is behooved him to be made like unto his own brethren, that he might be a merciful and faithful high priest, things pertaining to God to make reconciliation for the sins of the people. Now, this is what Yeshua did. This is what Jesus himself did. And the Pope of Rome is trying to put himself in Christ's place and pretending to make a reconciliation. And the reconciliation he thinks he's making is Daniel 9.24, the seven weeks are determined upon thy people, upon thy holy city, to finish the transgression, to make an end of sins, and to make reconciliation for iniquity, and to bring in everlasting righteousness, to seal up the vision and prophecy, and to anoint the most holy. And that's exactly what they're trying to do through Mechodesha. Mechodesha, the, the famous... Uh, uh, bringing reconciliation into Israel here where the Pope of Rome is trying to reconcile the Islam, uh, Judaism, and of course Catholicism as one unity. That's what we've been seeing for the last couple of years inside of Israel. And as I said, not only that, but then we see all these things that are happening into the world. It is Roman influence over the entire globe. It is very sad to say the least. And as I look at Mechodeshet, one thing that, that comes to my mind, it seems that the, the Vatican is really trying to play out uh, Ezekiel 45, 17. And maybe this is what's in their mind. And it shall come, and it shall be the prince's part to give burnt offerings and meat offerings and drink offerings and the feasts and in the new moons and in the Sabbaths and all the solemnities of the house of Israel, he shall prepare the sin offering and meat offering and the burnt offering and the peace offerings to make reconciliation for the house of Israel. So maybe this is 
something that the Pope of Rome really feels that they must do? I, I don't know. I'm just really baffled by what I'm seeing in this relationship and this move of the churches back to, to, to the Vatican itself is troubling me to the very core to see that the entire globe is coming under Roman rule. What is next? Who will be tried next? Will it come to a place that churches that do not cooperate will also be tried? You know, the Bible speaks about they think they do God a service by killing you. Maybe these wars, I kind of wonder if Bashar al-Assad may not find himself under the ICC before much longer. All these wars that are happening, their leaders and individuals involved in them end up finding themselves in the Roman court. Anyone that was fighting against their ideology will find themselves before the ICC. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live, Arab Talk.